When it comes to abortion rights, polls show that over two thirds of black American adults say abortion should be legal, which is higher uh, than the proportion among either white or Latinx adults. In the black community specifically, some say it's time for black men to speak up on the need to protect abortion rights. In an op-ed for the Miami Herald, four black men lawmakers in Florida write, quote, we are especially concerned because abortion is health care and the lack of access to health care disproportionately affects black women and families. Joining us is one of the authors of that article, Florida State Representative Kevin Chambliss. So are there enough black men speaking out for abortion rights and, and really reproductive freedom right now? And if not, why not? Um, one, thanks for that question and thanks for having me here. And absolutely not. Uh, I was literally at an abortion rally um, over the weekend and I was, I felt so much like the minority because I could count the number of black men in a crowd of about a thousand on my two hands. And that's unacceptable when we know that African-American women are disproportionately affected by um, these court rulings. And so we have to step up, we have to speak up because we also know that our communities can be quite conservative. And when they don't see themselves in the conversation, they don't necessarily pay attention to the conversation. So our presence means something when it comes to not only standing up um, and letting people know that we are black men, that we are pro-choice, but also making sure that education around why abortion is health care is important that our communities know this is not a one issue topic. This deals with the lives of the women that we love. We are the sons, the brothers, the fathers. I'm a father of a newborn baby girl. Um, you know, the, the cousins, the friends of women who participate in one of the most dangerous surgeries that they'll ever participate in in their lives. We need to stand beside them. We need to stand behind them and let the world know um, that we believe that their body belongs to them and that it shouldn't be controlled or dictated by any government. You mentioned that um, in some instances there is a conservative, uh, let's say, thread uh, in some black uh, male communities, whether they be um, faith communities, fraternities. Um, so can you speak to where that comes from? Um, because one of the things that I note is that, and Orrin, Orrin Jacobson from Men for Choice, as I know you know, always talks about how it's really the conservative, anti-choice men that are real loud um, and everybody else is pretty quiet. But are black men being quiet because they agree with the anti-choice men, you think? I think there's definitely, and we'll use your term, a thread um, of that in the community. And many times that's because they have not engaged in the conversation. Many times that's because they might have been a familial participant as, you know, the, the father, the boyfriend, um, and or the husband of someone who had to make this difficult choice. And so they don't want to speak up as much as they could speak up, one, because they don't really know a lot about it. And many times they don't want people to really know exactly how they feel. And honestly, a lot of that has to do with religious preferences. A lot of that has to do with them thinking about it from a one-sided view. And that's why we want to have this conversation. Because look, I know that as we begin to engage Black men, that we're not going to always agree. But I guarantee you, even if we don't agree on... Um, on, on the subject completely, at the end of the conversation, both of us will be more educated on the subject. And that is um, making sure that we both leave that conversation knowing that abortion is health care. We're talking about reproductive health care rights for women who many times have a higher death rate at pregnancy than any other demographic. And when black children are, are, are dying at a higher rate as well. And so that's an important conversation for our community to have. And we're ready to engage them on it. In terms of the way in which we can frame this particular issue, I mean, Congressman Ayanna Presley talks about anti-abortion laws as being rooted in white supremacy. I mean, how can, what, what kind of language is effective with black men in engaging them on this issue? Um, because I think naturally they think, oh, abortion, that's a woman's issue, and they go and mm -hmm. do something else. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's about black men standing up for black women. Um, us speaking out and supporting black women. They are the demographic that's most disproportionately affected by this. And if we love our sisters the way that we say that we do, 
then we have to stand with them, that we have to let them know that we support them, whatever decision that they choose to make. But we want to make sure that as they make that decision, that they have the best health care services available. They're having our babies. They are the people who are loving us. We came from Black women. And so we should be standing beside them every step of the way. We have to articulate that as much as we can because, again, we're trying to support Black women. And we know that when we support Black women, that we support all women and making sure that they know that their bodies are theirs and their choice is theirs. I'm singing Tupac in my head. <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, just saying, you know, we came from a woman. Okay, like, I'm not going to do it. I, I'm not, Ari. I'm not going to start rapping. Representative Kevin Chambliss, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your perspective. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.